Hi guys, this is Ranjit and welcome to the Tech Q&A session and this is the third Tech Q&A session that we are doing in 2023. Sorry, last month we just couldn't do it. A lot of stuff was going on, some personal stuff and all this thing. But uh, here I've taken a lot of questions. In fact, about 20 odd questions. And yes, a lot of smartphone related questions, obviously. Uh, but also have taken some questions on solar and also on EVs and stuff. So let's get on with this. And the first uh, uh, question that we got was from Krishna. Uh, and he's asking, do you see a future where phones get launched with a certain hardware feature disabled and gets enabled only after paying a subscription? A very interesting question. And I think so from where you are getting it, uh, we have seen in some of the cars in Europe, especially German cars, they come with a lot of features, but they are not enabled. You have to pay a subscription. For example, BMW, if I remember, heated seat if you want, you have to pay a subscription. So you are thinking something like this on smartphones. But I don't think so this will happen on smartphones because the thing is that to give all those features, uh, you have to actually add those hardware inside a smartphone. And it simply does not make sense if a manufacturer for a smartphone is paying, uh, is adding all that hardware and people are not going to use it. Uh, so I don't think so the subscription thing for enabling features is going to come out on smartphones anytime soon. What a very interesting question I have to say. Anyways, moving to the next one. This is from Shubham. Uh, he's asking, uh, do you really think that the Xiaomi 13 Pro is worth the hype since it's priced at 80,000 rupees. Why would anybody buy at 80,000 for a phone which gives only three years of update and sense of going for the Samsung Galaxy S23 uh, series or maybe an iPhone since it will uh, give at least five or six years of update and consistency. Uh, the S23 series are offering four years of Android upgrades uh, and five years of security updates. Whereas yes, the uh, 13 Pro is offering three years of what do you say? Uh, security, uh, sorry, Android updates. And, but the security updates is the same five years yes that's a big question i would say the only uh, area where i feel that users will migrate to this 13 pro is if camera is their highest criteria i would say specifically the rear facing camera the front facing cameras are better on the s23 series or the ultra but the rear facing camera is where this phone is excelling and that's the reason still my main sim is in this smartphone uh, so again, it will come down to what do you say, uh, the people who like that Leica look, what you're getting from the cameras. Uh, if it's a general user who, for whom the camera is not the highest priority, yes, they will obviously migrate to the S23 series. But this is the smartphone for people uh, who are looking for that rear facing camera performance. Uh, Okay, next question. This is from Aditya. He's uh, saying, Hi Ranjit, nothing to phone will be uh, on the Snapdragon 8 Gen. Uh, what are your expectations? Whether they'll be the benchmark again for the industry? Yes, uh, the nothing phone one came with the Snapdragon 778. Uh, we know that the nothing phone two now will be coming with the Snapdragon 8 Gen processor. We don't know if it's the 8 plus Gen 1 or the 8 Gen 2. I hope it's the 8 Gen 2. Uh, but I feel uh, this is not going to be the total game changer. I don't think so. It will be a challenge to the S23 series or the ultras and stuff. But again, I think so. this can be a very good challenge to the uh, value flagships. For example, the OnePlus 11 series or even uh, if they get the camera right, even to the Xiaomi series. Because I feel the pricing will obviously increase uh, and they might price it around... 55 to 60,000 or in that ballpark, I would say. So uh, I would say it will be a very good alternative for um, the OnePlus series or even the Motorola. The Motorola again are very good. They come with stock Android experience. The UI is very stock. But the problem with the Motorola phones is that you know that the camera is not that great. I think so in that area, uh, nothing will be good. Nothing is sticking to pretty close to stock Android uh, experience apart from some minor additions. But again, the, generally the camera, what we have seen is pretty good on the nothing phone. So I think so they can capture that sort of the market and they can be a very very good competitor to the oneplus if they get their things right they will eat a lot of share uh, from oneplus because right now oneplus 11 what does nothing it's just color os with the skin of oxygen os anyways moving to the next one uh, this is by siddhartha 
how does Xiaomi 13 Pro camera perform against the Pixel 7 or the 7 Pros? Would you pick, uh, uh, what would you pick if camera was the main concern? I didn't actually test it side by side with the Pixel 7 or the 7 Pro, uh, but the rear facing camera on this uh, Xiaomi 13 Pro is outstanding. That is the thing that I liked about this one. And you have that Leica settings, natural or vibrant also you can set. And the dynamic range is amazing. One thing that I noticed on this uh, Xiaomi 13 Pro is that uh, the shutter, lag is almost negligible and i would say one of the best i have seen among uh, all android smartphones so that way i like it even in challenging light conditions there is almost no shutter lag so and also the pictures that come from the main uh, rear facing camera are very very good again i didn't do side by side with the pixel 7 but i think so uh, in taking pictures it's faster than the pixel 7 Pro because there's almost no shutter lag uh, I'll have to test it side by side, but the dynamic range is very good. Uh, I think so in the front facing camera, the pixel will go ahead because to be frank, uh, they put a lot of effort in the rear facing camera, but I think so they completely forgot about the optimizations with the front facing camera. I don't know if that will change with the updates, but as of now, I would say uh, among the uh, smartphones that I have used with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the front facing camera is the weakest on this uh, 13 Pro, whereas uh, it is among one of the uh, strongest with the rear facing camera. So that's what it is. <coughs> Let, let me move to the next one. This is Mr. Wala. He's saying, hey, Ranjit, can you share the battery charging time for the Nexon EV on when you should charge, at what percentage you should charge that, and for the overall health of the battery? And is it okay to buy an electric car and use it as a primary car? Uh, okay, the first thing is that I don't own, own the Nexon EV, but I know, uh, own the N Nexon EV Max, which has the uh, larger battery capacity. And with this one, you can also opt for the fast charger, slightly fast charger, that is 7.2 kilowatt charger. That doesn't work with the regular Nexon EV. The regular Nexon EV, you have to use the standard 3.3 kilowatt charger. And the uh, standard Nexon EV will charge in eight, eight or nine hours with that standard charger. You generally don't drain it to uh, 0%. You charge it when it's 15 or 20%. But uh, with the regular 3.3 kilowatt charger, the Nexon EV Max will take almost about 12 to uh, 14 hours, uh, 12 to 13 hours to charge. That's why I use the 7.2 kilowatt charger. And from about 20, 25%, it charges in about 45, uh, four hours, five, uh, four and a half hours. Uh, and uh, regarding charging, uh, I, I see this people who get new EVs, they get that battery anxiety. And whenever the battery falls below 50%, they just start charging it. Generally avoid that. I would say uh, you should charge it. Yes, you can top up, top it up in the middle of when you're going on trips or something and plan, but regularly don't do that. I would say drop, let it drop at least to about 25% or so, then charge it. That is the, and, and also charge it uh, up to actually 100%. You shouldn't stop the charging. Uh, at about 80 or uh, 90 percent because the Nexon EVs actually have uh, lithium uh, sorry uh, LFP batteries uh, and these LFP batteries actually you should charge up to 100 percent you shouldn't stop it uh, at 90 percent uh, or uh, 85 percent because after 95 to 100 percent these batteries do that uh, battery calibration and stuff with the BMS so it's advisable whenever you're charging it uh, charge it up to 100 uh, percent and uh, I have been uh, mostly using it uh, with my home charger. I have that 7.2 kilowatt. And sometimes I also use the regular 3.3 kilowatt charger. Uh, so the thing is that uh, don't worry too much and don't get that battery anxiety and don't do that very small, small charges. I noticed that many people who buy, uh, I also did that initially uh, when you have the new car, battery anxiety, you have charged 200 percent. Yes, it, uh, you drove it uh, for about, let's say, 120 kilometers or something and battery fell to 60 percent. You, ju you just put a charge. Don't do that, I would say. Ideally, let it go around 30, below 30% is my figure. Below 30% and between 20 and 30% is what I generally charge. Anyways, moving to the next one. And uh, advisable to charge up to 100%. That's an important uh, thing with LFP batteries that the Nexon. In fact, it's very good that the Nexon EV has LFP batteries. And in India, these uh, LFP batteries are way better than uh, other batteries uh, that are used in EV because these have very high thermal resistance. And also, uh, the charging, uh, what do you say, charge cycles are way, way more. In fact, regular batteries on uh, uh, cars uh, generally have about 1,000 to 1,200 charge cycle whereas these LFP batteries uh, are generally uh, they can be charged for up to 2000 to 3000 times so again as you can see the longevity of the batteries is very very high with LFP batteries anyways moving to the next uh, one 
and yes, uh, the Nexon EV uh, has become now my primary car and uh, have driven in the past it's just over three months all almost 5000 kilometers and my other car that's my BMW has now become like the secondary car the weekend car the and the next one has become the primary one okay uh, this is by Paris uh, hello uh, Gigi Rajit I hope your family are doing great I have two questions yes first question I own a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra battery health around 85% as per Aku battery he says and I'm thinking of upgrading to the S23 Ultra is it worth upgrading to the S23 Ultra yes if you are planning to upgrade from the S21 Ultra yes you will find this S23 uh, ultra a huge upgrade i would say this heats this is going to the two things that you'll notice immediately apart from the camera the camera has improved but two things that you'll uh, notice immediately on this phone is that uh, you'll get way 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 better battery life and second thing this smartphone will not heat up the s21 ultra and even the s22 ultra tends to heat up quite a bit but that is not the case on this one so yes it's a, a actually pretty good upgrade if you're planning to upgrade from the s21 ultra in my frank opinion and what i'll do is i'll also leave the link of this device so youtube has started a new thing where we can link the product directly within the uh, video so i'll uh, leave the link of this one also uh, with that and uh, let's move to the next question uh, this is by Mr. Singh. He's asking a very interesting question. I get this question a lot from others also. Do you think that the brand image will affect the sales of the devices like Xiaomi 13 Pro, Vivo X90 and iQ11? Because these manufacturers are generally known for making solid mid-ranges but not in the flagship territory. Uh, yes, to a certain yes, that is a thing that these uh, manufacturers have to do it. Uh, again, this is a beautiful device, the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Uh, the photographs that you get from the rear facing camera is very good. And overall, the build quality is solid. It's made up of ceramic and all those things. But yeah, there, there is a mental block with a lot of users. If you are spending this much, uh, this is for about 80,000, but discount that card you get for 70,000. And many people think, why not spend for an iPhone and a Samsung? So that is something, yes, still a mental block. The camera on the Vivo X80 Pro I tested. I don't, didn't test the X90 yet. And that was also fabulous, I would say. Much better than many of the iPhones and all these things in terms of camera, but real human subjects, I would say. Uh, so yes there is a mental block and these manufacturers have to prove themselves out uh, for example xiaomi uh, past uh, earlier they didn't have a really good track record with the miui updates uh, now the, the new miui 14 has launched and it's showing a lot of promise but again only time will tell how the these smartphones age so again uh, these uh, smartphone manufacturers like the uh, vivo xiaomi etc who are launching super high-end premium smartphones uh, they are have to actually work on updates and some give quality updates and then only and i feel uh, to calm users uh, generally every smartphone manufacturer gives just one year of warranty uh, at least for these uh, super flagships what these guys are releasing vivo or xiaomi or whatever they should start giving additional warranty i would say at least two years if not more i would say that will calm a lot of users in my frank opinion uh, but yeah that's what it is anyway so moving to the next one this is about rohit why can't companies focus more on putting good wide angle cameras main camera has become 200 megapixel but wide angle still uh, 8 uh, 8 megapixel earlier oneplus uh, used to put 16 megapixel but now they also follow the same uh, rohit it all comes down to the cost uh, the 8 megapixel ultra wide is mainstream it's a very cheap sensor but if you're going for higher megapixel count like 16 megapixel or even let's say 50 megapixel that we have on the xiaomi uh, 13 pro even for the wider the cost increases so it's all about the cost guys uh, on the ultra flagships and stuff you see manufacturers don't uh, what do you say do shortcomings in the camera sensors uh, but again in value flagships you are still noticing and yes i noticed that the one plus is now i don't know at least for the flagship they should have gone uh, with the 16 megapixel instead of the 8 megapixel i hear what you are uh, getting but it's all down to the cost uh, this is by Surin. Hi, uh, sir. After the recent update of the Pixel 7 series, I feel that they have reduced the charging speed from 30 watts. Do you notice the same in the Pixel 7? I actually did not uh, test uh, recently the Pixel charging time after the update. Even earlier, it was it used to never charge at 30 watts. It used to charge at about 22 watts. That's why whenever I use the Pixel 7 or the 7 Pro, I just charge it overnight. Before going to the sleep, I just put it to charge and I don't time it. So I haven't timed it uh, after the recent update. If 
it the charging time fell further because already i would say the charging time on the pixel 7 and the 7 pro were pathetic it used to charge just around 22 uh, watts compared to many of the other uh, flagships. Even I would say the Samsung, uh, which is not known for very fast charging, does charge quite a bit faster than the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro. That is something that I do not like with the Pixel 7 series. And I hope with the Pixel 8 series, Google addresses this. Uh, just charging, they claim 30 watt charger, but it doesn't even charge it consistently about 21 or 22 watts. That's a fact. Anyways, moving to the next one. Uh, this is by Aru Diaries, very interesting name. I'm upgrading from the Samsung Note uh, 9 now. In a confusion, which one to go uh, for with the Samsung S22 series or the S23 series? My priority is camera and battery life. Definitely go with the S23 series. Don't go for the S22 uh, series if you are upgrading. You, um, you will thank me once you get the uh, Samsung S23 series because the battery life uh, you will get is better and also no heating that is there on the S22 series. I would say Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is a generational leap uh, I would say compared to the earlier Snapdragon processors. Frankly, uh, past three years, uh, Qualcomm was doing a really shitty job in terms of the processors being uh, manufactured. The Snapdragon 888 was not good, 888 Plus was not that great. Even the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 was not that great. But now, finally, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 uh, fixes all. So definitely the S23 series. That's why you have noticed that most of the smartphones that I'm testing with the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 2 are performing so, so good. Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, uh, by Mr. Ayapa. He's saying a small question. Why companies are not concentrating on mid-range mobiles? They are only targeting uh, flagship mobiles and give all the features high -end, to high-end mobiles only. Uh, Ayapa, this simple, what do you say, uh, business, I would say. Uh, companies have way higher profit margins on their higher-end phones compared to the mid-range phones. And in fact, I'm seeing this happening a lot in India and even with brands like Xiaomi now, which used to concentrate quite a bit on the budget range and value flagships, now has slowly started moving up the chain. And in fact, uh, I think so, what they realized Xiaomi is that uh, with their low-cost devices, they were simply not making that much profit margins. Uh, and every company eventually, um, after they become very big, they have thousands of employees, they need the profits. And that's why I think so. Now, even Xiaomi, if you notice, even in the mid-range, their uh, smartphones are not priced that aggressively like what they used to. And that's a simple fact. Um, brands simply don't make more profits on these uh, mid-range of uh, value devices. They get a lot more profit on the higher-end smartphones. It's pure business. Anyways, moving to the next one. This is by uh, Pravesh. Are wireless earbuds the biggest e-waste of these days? These batteries don't last more than an hour after one year of use, at least in the case of those I've tried. Uh, none come with replaceable batteries. Yes, uh, the TWS have said this earlier also. Uh, generally, uh, uh, will last about two years and the good ones will last for about the, the reputable ex expensive one, three or three and a half years. And after that, you have to sadly just throw them because none of them uh, come with replaceable batteries. Uh, this is by Vinesh. Some techies suggest that after a major Android upgrade, we should do a factory reset so that the phone will be maximum optimized to the new version and it will reduce the bugs. What's your opinion about it? Yes, in a way, yes. Uh, if you do a factory reset, uh, your phone will uh, feel a lot faster. And I would say uh, do this uh, when you are upgrading to a new phone. What I've noticed is that many people, let's say you have an old, old Android phone that you're using for three, four years. And they when they get a new Android phone, uh, they don't set it up from scratch. What they do is now Google is also offering migration assistance. Samsung actually, if you have Samsung to Samsung, you can just attach one cable from the old phone to the new one and it'll migrate everything, in the, even apps and all this thing. And I would suggest not to do that because what happens is that with the old phone, let's say it's a three year, four year old phone, you have a lot of unnecessary junk apps, etc. that you're not using. All that junk will get migrated to the new phone and you will simply not get that great performance. So whenever you're getting a new phone or something, uh, I would suggest uh, installing it from the scratch. That way you will not install a lot of junk apps that you're no longer using and the baggage that comes from the old device. In fact, one of the user who recently purchased the S23, I think so he migrated from his old phone to the new one and he was just getting a SOT of three and a half hours. And, but most of the users, uh, I would say who, who are getting the S23 and S23 plus are averaging above six hours of SOT. You notice that? It's just because he just migrated and all the uh, unnecessary baggage and all bloatware, etc. what is there on his old phone migrated to the new phone, making it slower. So that's what it is. So yes, uh, 
I always, I personally, whenever I'm again getting a new phone, I generally don't do the migration and stuff. I manually install. I have a set of eight, nine apps that I uh, uh, have to use and I install all of them manually from the Play Store. That way, any junk app or whatever I'm not using, that doesn't get installed on a new phone and hog it up. And again, a big, big, big tip. If you don't use Facebook, many of the smartphones come pre-installed with fake Facebook. <coughs> Please uninstall that and remove it because Facebook, if you don't even use it, it uses a lot of background processes and hogs the battery life. That's a fact. Anyways, moving to the next one. This is by Gautam. Do you advise using the Flip 4 without the screen protector? It has been six months since, and my pre-installed one is bubbling. I would suggest go to a Samsung or a proper service center and get it replaced. Uh, um, I actually have the Fold 4. Mine hasn't come out, uh, but I, it can be used without the, what do you say, uh, screen protector because it's actually a UTG glass. But I will not take a risk. If that UTG glass gets scratched or something, man, that's going to be very expensive replacement. So go to the Samsung authorized center and get it replaced by them and ask them to install a new one. You don't do it uh, personally by yourself. Okay, um, this is by uh, Mr. Raja. He's saying, how's your experience with on-grid? This is a solar question. On-grid solar system so far. Can you please do a full in-depth review of a home solar uh, setup explaining the pros and cons? Uh, Mr. Raja, uh, have an old, uh, what do you say, on-grid solar system in my old uh, uh, house. Uh, this is my new setup actually. Here, I'm getting the uh, on-grid solar system uh, installed. In fact, I have paid up the money and everything. I think so by next week, the panels, everything should be coming up. And by the next uh, one more week, it should get set up. Uh, the problem with the, the pros and cons, I'll tell you. The uh, good thing about on-grid system is that you don't have to have batteries or anything. And it's net metering that is done. So let's say uh, in the morning, the solar uh, actually uh, generates power. Even if you're not at home, it will get calculated by the meter calculates. Out, you have, uh, let's say, generated 10 units of electricity. And evening, you can just come and you uh, use your home like normally. And at the end of the month, they balance it out. So you don't need to have very expensive batteries to store the power. So that's the big advantage of on-grid solar. But on-grid solar, again, you have to work uh, with the government or with your society. For example, uh, where I'm, and a new setup is there in the society, we are not allowed to actually put uh, on-grid uh, solar systems more than five kilowatt. That is the limit that they have uh, given. So again, you have to follow the limit. Again, uh, if uh, with the electricity department, you have to check uh, what is the limit that you have. I personally actually wanted to put go for a eight kilowatt uh, solar system in my new setup. But as they are not allowing uh, on grid more than five, so I'll be putting the on grid of uh, five kilowatt. And later on, maybe after a month or two, go with a three kilowatt uh, off grid system that will have batteries. But the biggest advantage is that on grid system will work out to be way, way, way cheaper. And you don't have to invest in batteries because batteries is a recurring expense. Every five, five six years, you'll have uh, five odd years, not even six years, five odd years, uh, you'll have to replace the battery. And that's a big expense. That's not there with on grid system and it's that way i would say on grid system are way uh, easier uh, to maintain but i'll try to actually uh, post a video installation and all these things being done on my new setup on my other channel geeky ranjit rides and vlogs uh, this is by aditya uh, is there any update on the Samsung S23 FE edition this year? Does the regular S23 also has the 3 degree OS like the Big Brother Ultra? Sadly, uh, no. The regular S23 does not have the 3 degree OS movement that this Ultra has. But don't worry, the video stability even on the regular S23 is actually pretty good because it does employ OIS plus EIS to uh, make the video stable but again yes this is crazy stable this even if you're taking the video on your hand is shaking like this the video will come out uh, stable uh, but we don't s20 fe, FE edition guys we don't know there are some rumors that samsung might release the s23 fe edition uh after two quarters or something but that will it's rumored that it will not come with the snapdragon processor but a upcoming exynos uh, processor again these are rumors guys so i don't know about it but yeah uh, the S23 regular one does not have the 3 degree OIS like the Ultra has. Anyways, moving to the next one. This is my initial. Uh, How is the Samsung Freestyle projector in 2023? Is there any other uh, option? Please let me know. It's from my room. Would love to know your opinion. Initial, I will not recommend you the Samsung Freestyle uh, projector that was launched last year. I would say instead of that, uh, go with this BenQ GS. 
50 projector uh, it's for about 74 75000 and this is actually going to be way better than the Samsung freestyle not only it has built in batteries uh, uh, but the color reproduction of the BenQ projectors is just amazing and I feel overall this is a true portable uh, projector and in fact one of the biggest thing that people forget about when you're taking projectors is the brightness and you have to only look at ANSI lumens don't just trust if they just say 5000 lumens 3000 it's all garbage unless a manufacturer uh, specifies ANSI lumens it's not and ANSI lumens will be way less in fact uh, this BenQ GS50 uh, has 500 ANSI lumens which is actually way brighter than what the Samsung Freestyle does so definitely I would say the BenQ1 is uh, better in fact if many uh, I've got a lot of questions regarding this uh, portable projector uh, BenQ GS50 if uh, more of you ask maybe I'll try try to get contact in contact with BenQ India and try to get a review on it but uh, I have a high-end BenQ projector um, on top of the line 4k projector and the image quality from the BenQ especially the colors what you get are just amazing Anyways, moving to the next one, this is by Suraj. Why companies, even the major brands, are so convinced that people have to release a new smartphone version every year, even though people are not just upgrading their last year? Can't they skip? It's again the business cycle, man. Um, every year, these companies are public limited companies. They have to show uh, profits on balance sheet. But again, as a regular user, you don't have to upgrade every year. As I've told even recently, especially for Android smartphones, I would say this year, if you're going for flash specifically is an excellent excellent uh, year because Qualcomm after almost three years has produced a very good uh, chipset that's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 so if you're looking for a flagship Android smartphone I feel this is a great year because after almost three years Qualcomm has finally released a good chip that does not have heating issues and also gets very good battery life the Snapdragon 888 888 plus Snapdragon 8 Gen uh, 8, uh, 8 Gen 1 all were rubbish in terms of optimization in my frank opinion but finally this year is a good one so again you get cycles like like this uh, so you have to wait it and don't upgrade now the snapdragon 8 gen 2 is so good i don't think so the snapdragon 8 gen 3 will come out you'll need to upgrade i would say anyways moving to the next one uh this is by genius <laughs> Uh, hey Ranjit, uh, upcoming Android version should have two features he says one ability to face background activity of user installed app uh, Stock, uh, stock Android does not do that, but many of the custom UIs and its stuff will do that. In fact, with MIUI also, you can actually suspend the apps for background uh, activity and stuff. Second, ability to choose which app should use the mic camera steel. This is uh, already available on every Android, new Android smartphone. Whenever you actually install a new app, uh, it'll ask for permissions. And again, let's say if you've already given permissions, you can just go back in the setting and individually for every app, you can, let's say you don't want this app to have camera or mic permission you can certainly disable it already with existing android you have that uh, ability anyways guys uh, that's it for now for this tech QA session uh, do let me know what do you feel about the same and guys if you're still not subscribed to this youtube channel hit that subscribe button this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys